Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to transform the body using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.4 and this is essentially a tutorial showing you guys how to use the uh, warp transform tool as well as the cage transform tool and these are similar to the warp tool in Photoshop and the puppet transform tool in Photoshop. They're a little bit different you're going to see that in this tutorial but they do perform similar tasks or create similar effects. But of course, before we get into that, I wanna direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, as well as Project Translate, GIMP playlists, you can support us on Patreon, and of course, we've got our poll of the week results on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher, which is a best-selling course on Udemy. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna be using this photo from Pixabay and as always, you can download it for free. So here's the photo after I've applied the effects. Really, I've just done some subtle editing here. This is not in any way, you know, my ideal body type or anything like that. I'm just showing you guys how these tools can be used and how they're commonly used. And so here is an after and here's the before. And so you can see uh, some of the things I've done is I've used the cage transform tool to elongate the legs a little bit. Uh, I've used the warp transform tool to uh, bring in the arms a little bit here. And then same with the neck. I know a lot of people like to, especially in Photoshop, elongate the neck to try to make people look taller and thinner and whatever. Uh, in this case, I just sort of used the warp tool to make the neck a little bit thinner. I didn't elongate it. I don't think GIMP can do that really effectively. And then I also enhanced the eyes a little bit using the warp tool. In my opinion, I think it almost looks cartoony to do that, but uh, that is a common thing people do. And so here is a before and here's an after again. So let's go ahead and dive into this tutorial. So here's the original. And so I'm gonna start with the legs here and I'm going to grab my transform tool, my cage transform. And what you can do with this essentially is create nodes. So I'm gonna to click to create nodes. And what I wanna do is I want to go ahead and surround the legs with these nodes here. And you can see there's lines attached to the nodes. And I'm generally trying to follow the contours of her legs. I'm not trying to you know, intricately trace the contours or anything. I'm just roughly uh, contouring to the legs and including the elements that I want to basically elongate. So in this case, it's the feet and the legs. And so I'm clicking to connect that last node there. And so now we have a cage here. And now what I'm gonna do is select the nodes that I want to actually stretch out. And then I'm going to make sure that the nodes that I wanna act as anchors are not selected. And you could tell when a node is selected because it's in a rectangle shape versus a circular shape. So I'm going to click on this node here and then I'm going to shift click and I'm gonna click these four nodes down here and I'm gonna leave these two as my anchors. So that means that I'm going to elongate everything on here using these nodes as my anchor points. And so you'll see as I click, and I'm just gonna drag this down uh, just a tiny bit. I don't wanna overdo it. And so you'll see there that has gone ahead and elongated those legs there. And if I hit the enter key, it'll go ahead and apply that transformation. So I actually performed that transformation on my original layer and I meant to keep the original and do it on a new layer. So what I'll do is just go to file, open recent and open this file back up. So here's our original. And now I can just click and drag and drop this into this tab here. And so now our original is on the top and I'll go ahead and click and drag that below here. And I'm gonna name this edit and then I'm gonna name this one original. And so now we've got an original copy and we've got an edited version. And so now I can kind of show you guys a comparison. So here's before and here's after. So a side effect of doing this is that number one, these are transform tools, which means any area you're transforming is going to lose a little bit of quality, pixel quality. So it'll look a little bit blurry. Number two, uh, especially with the cage transform, whenever you move pixels, you'll see some things start to not align. Like in this case right here, there's a little line here forming from the shadow where we moved the original shadow. So we're gonna have to take care of that. And then the feet have also enlarged a little bit. So those look kind of fake right now. So what I'll do is I'll grab my zoom tool and zoom in on this area here. And now I'm gonna use my heel tool. So I'll grab my heel tool and you can adjust the size of this heel tool here. And what this is doing, if you guys haven't used it before, if I hold control and click, it's going to select pixels from that area within my brush head size. And then if I just regularly paint right here, it's going to pull pixels from this area as well as use pixels from the original area to basically create a combined result. And it uses an algorithm to do that. And that just helps sort of blend areas like this line here. 
and uh, erase really any imperfections. So you'll see by doing that, I've sort of recreated the shadow here and blended some areas together and that just makes this look like we didn't really you know, warp this at all. So while I'm in this area of the image, I do want to shrink the feet a little bit because they did enlarge quite a bit when I performed that cage transform. So now I can go over to my warp tool here and there's several options for the warp tool. If I click on this drop down here, you'll see several options. So you can move pixels. We're gonna use that in a little bit. You can grow an area. We're also gonna use that, but that just allows you to basically enlarge the pixels within your area that you're painting on. You could shrink an area, which is what we're gonna use in this case. And then you've got some other options here. You can swirl it. So if you wanna swirl the pixels around, you can do that clockwise or counterclockwise. You can erase warping, and that's only before you apply the warp. So if you warp an area and then you mess up, you can click on this and erase that warping. Or you could smooth out the warping if you think it looks a little bit jagged or you know just a little bit rough. You can also change the size of the brush area that you're painting on with the warp tool. So you'll see here the warp tool does have a brush area. It's around my mouse pointer. And by the way, you'll also see there's a wave on my mouse pointer. That's what uh, the warp tool or the uh, warp transform tool will look like if you're using a different icon mode than I am or if uh, you're using just an older version of GIMP. It'll have that wave look instead of this uh, look that has the checkerboard grid with the uh, pixels that are being transformed on it. So it, it could be one or the other. But anyway, you could change the size of your brush. You could change the hardness. So that's the pixels around the, uh, or within the area that you're warping. So how hard or soft it is. The strength is just, it's what it sounds like. It's how, how much uh, warping is actually going to occur. If you turn the strength all the way up, it's going to warp all of the pixels within your brush area. So if I turn this up to 100, it's going to apply a lot more warping. I hit Control Z. So I like to keep this around 50 and that's what the default is. And then the spacing is just the spacing in between your brush head as you paint while it's warping. Interpolation is the quality of the transform. So if you set it to none or linear or even cubic, that is going to perform the transformation faster, but the quality will be lower. And then no halo and low halo are the settings I recommend. And that basically increases the quality of the warp, but it does uh, perform the warp a little bit slower. It's not noticeable if you're using a pretty fast computer. The abyss policy has to do with when you're painting pixels from outside your layer. So in this case, like this yellow and black dotted line, if I try to warp pixels from outside this area, basically GIMP has to invent pixels. And so this is the policy you set as to how those pixels are invented. So the clamp tool is going to basically take pixels, your leftmost or your bottommost pixels and repeat them uh, from outside the layer. And you can't really tell what's going on here because it's all blue. But if you set this to loop, it will basically repeat the pixels around your brush as you draw outside the layer. And then if you set it to none, it'll just create transparency. Uh, the high quality preview, I recommend checking that because if you don't, uh, basically whenever you're warping, it's going to create a low quality preview until you apply the warp. If you have a really slow computer, you can go ahead and keep this unchecked to keep your computer from getting too slowed down. And then you've got some animate features here, which uh, just basically allows you to create frames for an animation, but we're not gonna be using that today. And uh, that's a less common use for this tool. All right, so now that you guys know all that stuff, I'm going to move on to shrinking the feet here. And I'm just, again, gonna to try to make this as subtle as possible. So I'm gonna change the type of warp to shrink area. And I'm gonna keep my brush size at 39 for now. And I'm gonna paint on the inside of the foot here. And you'll see as I do that, the pixels in the area are sort of moving over inside that area and it's causing the foot to shrink. Now, as you turn a corner like I just did, the dynamics of the warp sort of change. And so we're not getting as effective of results right here. So what I'll do is I'll change this back to erase warping and just paint that area back. And then I can switch this back over to shrink area and I can continue. And so you'll see this is sort of a delicate process because if you warp the wrong area, it can really just, I mean, it'll make it look like it's warped and that's not something you want. So I went ahead and shrunk the size of my brush because I don't want as much warping happening on this foot here because it's already smaller. And then I'll just try this side again. And so here is a before. And again, you can always change this back to erase warping if there's a part that you think you want to uh, bring back from the foot like so. And so you'll see I got some of the toe back in there, which is definitely something you want. 
And then I kind of overdid it right there. So let me go back to shrink area and see if I can get this back to how I want it. So that's not perfect. I'm gonna go over to smooth warping and see if I can smooth some of this out, make it look a little bit better. And as per usual, you don't wanna overdo it. I'm gonna hit control C because that didn't do a great job, but so you'll see that that's kind of smoothed out this strap here, which makes it look a little bit more realistic. And I think that's good enough for now. So I'm gonna hit the enter key and that's going to apply my warp. And if I grab my zoom tool, I can hold control and zoom out here. And so there you can see what we've done so far with the legs. Again, it's not perfect, but uh, you can see here's a before, that's the original and here's an after. So it does look pretty good. And so now we're gonna move on to the arm. So I'm gonna click and zoom in here on one of the arms. And I'm gonna grab my warp transform tool again. And this time I'm gonna change it back to move pixels. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of my brush using the brackets on my keyboard so you guys can see what size I'm using here. So now what I'm trying to do is move pixels from the outside here inward and it's going to cause her arm to move in inward and it's going to make her arm a little bit smaller. And so you'll see here, I'm trying to match the contour of the original arm. If I don't do that, it's going to you know, look a little bit crazy like that. So you wanna just try to subtly uh, move inward on the arm as you're following the curve of it. And here's a before and here's an after. And so I missed this spot right here. So we can go ahead and try to, let me undo that. And you can just move over and over a spot until you get it right, basically. So again, here's a before, here's an after. So nothing too major, it's a pretty subtle change, but uh, depending on what you're going for, what you want your final result to be, looks a little bit better. Again, there's a before, there's an after. And so now I'm gonna move over to the other side, and if I wanna keep those changes I just made, I can hit the move tool and that'll go ahead and apply the warp. So you can see there is what it looks like, and that's before. And so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to click and try to drag the pixels inward, and that's going to cause the arm to, uh, the pixels from the arm to drag in a little bit. Let me undo that. And again, I'm following the contour of the arm. And so there's a before and there's an after. So that's a pretty subtle effect there, a subtle change. And now what I'm gonna do is come up over here towards the face and neck area and you'll see that when I grabbed my zoom tool, it went ahead and applied that warp transform. If you didn't use any other tool or click on anything else while using the warp transform tool, you can just hit the enter key and that'll also apply the effects you made with that tool. But I'll go ahead and click and zoom in here. So for my next step, I'm going to make some adjustments to the neck here. So I'll grab my warp transform tool again. And again, I'm gonna keep this on move pixels, but I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit, shrink my brush down. And I'm going to just click and drag those pixels downward on the neck, and that's going to cause the neck to uh, sink down a little bit, which will make it look a little bit longer without having to actually move the entire head. So you'll see as I'm doing that, it looks like the neck is shrinking a little bit and elongating, so there's a before, there's an after. And I would be mindful of this necklace because uh, you could see that it did warp it a little bit. So you can either move it back with the warp tool or you can uh, change this back to erase warping and start again. But I think this looks fine. And I'll go ahead and hit the enter key and that'll apply the warp. So again, before and after. And you'll see as we're applying more and more warping, it's making our image a little bit more blurry. We're gonna sharpen it at the end. But I'm gonna grab my zoom tool now and this time I'm going to zoom in on the eyes. This part is not something I really recommend, but I'm just gonna show you guys how to do it anyway. So you can come over here and go to grow area and I can you know, grow these eyes. It almost looks like anime or something when I do this. So you'll see that this grows the pixel and Sort of a uh, side effect of doing this, in my opinion, is it makes it almost look like she's got like cataracts or something. And uh, that's obviously not great, but you can see now her eyes are enlarged. And then uh, I can do the same thing if I wanna do like shrink uh, pixels, shrink area, you know, shrink the nose. She's obviously already got a small nose, but uh, just for the sake of demonstration. And now if I grab my zoom tool and zoom out, so she kind of looks like a cartoon character with her eyes like that. 
So you can see she looks a little bit taller here. I think her legs look a little bit uh, thicker than they actually were before. So I'm gonna grab my warp transform tool, set this back to move pixels, increase the size of my brush, and you can kind of go over the uh, curvature of the leg here if you want to try to shrink it in a little bit. The better job you do of going over the curvature while you're uh, gradually moving in towards the leg, the uh, better it'll look. And we're just doing this to try to bring the legs back to their original size because when we elongated them, they kind of also became slightly larger. And I'm hitting Control Z and just trying to get the curvature right. You can see that if my hand is too shaky, you can uh, tell that I'm warping it too much because the legs no longer look straight. And then the last thing I'm going to do is really subtle, and I'm going to grab the zoom tool, zoom in on the waist here, and you can use the cage transform to try to bring in the waist a little bit, which is a common thing. And I'm going to click to create nodes here, and I'm creating them outside, so I'm moving the waist in, the part with the dress, but I want part of the background to come in with it. It's just going to help blend it in a little bit more. So I'm creating these nodes outside of where I'm moving the waist in. And I'm just making sure to select all of this stuff uh, because I want there to be some room for this to move inwards. And I'm trying to keep the arm out of this because I don't want her arm getting transformed. But now what I can do is I can click on a couple of these nodes here or maybe just these two nodes uh, closer to where the waist is and just go ahead and move those in. You'll see that as I do that, the waist moves in a little bit. And let me reselect these with the shift key. And I don't want to overdo it. I'm going to click on this node by itself. Let me click off these two nodes and then click on this one and try to move it back a little bit. But anyway, I just subtly move the waist in. I'll hit enter. And if you guys want to clean this up, you can grab like the clone tool and shrink the size of the brush here just so it fits within this area. Hold control, grab pixels from over here that are similar to these blue pixels and then just paint over this and that'll get rid of the line that was created there. And so I'll grab my zoom tool and zoom out. You can see there was a little bit of an artifact created here and so you can grab the heel tool if you want and uh, just choose within the dress here and control Z. Actually I think the clone tool will be better right here and try to just blend this a little bit. And I'll grab my zoom tool and zoom out. And so here's a before. You can look at her waist there. There's an after. So very subtle change, uh, but just a little bit of an enhancement there. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do here is sharpen this image up just because the transformations performed did detract from the quality a little bit. If you had it on no halo or low halo for the interpolation settings, which again is inside of the warp transform tool right here, uh, you probably didn't lose too much quality, but I'm going to go to Filters, Enhance, and what used to be called the Unsharp Mask is now just called Sharpen, and in parentheses it says Unsharp Mask. And I'm going to keep these settings the same, the radius at 3, the amount at 5, and here's a before and here's an after, so just sharpen that up a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and click OK, and there's our final image. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com and you can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.